Now that we know a little bit more about triangles, our next goal is to talk about congruence. Not just about triangles, but of, of uh, polygons in general. Um, and so we're going to need a couple definitions to, to start that off, um, but then we will jump into how we actually prove two triangles or two polygons in general congruent. So those two definitions are these. So corresponding parts, uh, specifically polygons, are the corresponding angles and corresponding sides of two polygons. So just like when we talked about uh, corresponding angles when we were talking uh, referring to uh, lines intersected by a transversal, we're talking about the angles or now the uh, sides that are kind of in the same location. Um, and so for two polygons or two triangles to be congruent to each other, what we need is for all their corresponding parts to be congruent. So that's my definition here of what congruent figures are. It's whenever those two polygons or corresponding parts are congruent. So let's look at an example. Uh, I'm going to have a couple triangles that I'm going to work with here. So here's one. I'm going to try to draw another one that is similar to it. Okay, so I'm going to label both of them. So it's ABC and DEF. And so I can talk about these two triangles, how I have them situated right now. Um, their corresponding parts would be like A, angle A with angle D, and angle B with angle E, and angle C with angle F. And so if I actually name these, uh, I can name them triangle ABC, and I can name them triangle DEF. And when I name them this way, uh, the way that I have them uh, currently named, it would lend to that corresponding parts in that way. Um, so what would it take for these two triangles to be congruent? And what I need is all their corresponding parts to be congruent. So I'm going to actually list them all out. So the corresponding parts that it would require for me to be congruent here, corresponding parts, would be, uh, so I'm going to work my way around. So angle A and angle D would have to be congruent to each other. So angle A would have to be congruent to angle D. Uh, I need angle B congruent with angle E. Angle B with congruent to angle E. And I need angle C congruent with angle F. Angle C is congruent to angle F. So these are each of the corresponding angles that would need to be congruent for these two objects to be congruent. The next thing I need then are my uh, corresponding sides. So I would need A, B, and D, E congruent to each other. A, B would have to be congruent to D, E. I would need, uh, what color have I not used? I don't know, I've lost track. I would need B, C to be congruent to E, F. And I would need, have I done this one? Let's go with this. I would need A, C to be congruent to D, F. A, C is congruent to D, F. So these are all the corresponding parts in this case, but just because two parts are corresponding doesn't necessarily mean they're congruent. Uh, but in this case, if I do have all these corresponding parts congruent, what I can actually write then is what's called a, called a congruent statement. So in this case, triangle ABC would be congruent to triangle DEF. And so this is what's called a congruent statement. It's a statement of congruence for these two polygons, specifically their triangles. And the way I write this is super important because I need all the corresponding parts to match up. For example, angle A and angle D have to be congruent to each other. Uh, angles B and E have to be congruent to each other. And angles C and F have to be congruent to each other. In addition, I can also match up all the sides. Side AB and side DE have to be congruent. And sides BC and EF have to be congruent, and also sides AC and DF need to be congruent as well. So just by looking at my congruent statement, I can actually tell a lot of information about these two triangles. And I can see all the corresponding parts that match. So how can I actually use this and then prove triangles congruent? Well, uh, what I need for two triangles congruent is that I need all of these things all these things here to be true. If all the corresponding parts are congruent, that will imply that the triangles are congruent. Also, if the triangles are congruent to each other, it'll imply that all these things 
are congruent as well, all the corresponding parts. So what I actually have here is what seems like a biconditional, and that's how I'm going to write it, because it's actually a definition of what it means for two triangles congruent to each other. And what it says is that two triangles are congruent if and only if their corresponding parts are congruent. So this statement being biconditional is true in both directions. If my two triangles are congruent, then their corresponding parts are congruent. Also, if all the corresponding parts are congruent, then triangles are congruent. So this is actually true, not just for triangles, but for any polygon. If all the corresponding parts are congruent, then those two polygons will be congruent, congruent and vice versa. Uh, however, we're just gonna work with triangles right now. And so when I actually go to write a proof, what I will need to show are these six things before I can actually say a triangles are congruent to each other. So uh, moving forward, we'll use this in proofs uh, this definition of congruent triangles uh, to justify that two triangles are congruent to each other before we learn some, some quicker ways of doing that.